Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One. Uh, this is a uh, donational indicator video. The TRO 2020 DYNSR Scalper. And that goes for, or stands for Dynamic Support Resistance Scalper. Uh, those of you who've known me since back in my trade station days, remember the TRO Dynamic SR, or Dynamic Support Resistance Indicator. And we had mentioned um, the DSR trades the other day when I had Walmart on the line. So it's like, okay, let, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. But first, just remember, these videos are for educational purpose only. Your results may differ from mine. Trading is extremely risky. You can lose all of your money. If you need trading, investment, or financial advice, seek the advice of an accredited financial professional. And, and as always, especially when you're trading, have your risk management in place. So I've actually got Walmart on the line. He's still there, right? Walmart. Hey, how you guys doing? Hope everything is going well. Yes. And, uh, yeah. I... I was going to say, I've got the indicator up, and we're, we're pretty much in a, in a position where we might actually be able to get a trade off of it. Now, um, Walmart and I, we use it, but we do it slightly different. So in my setup, we see we've got a one ball here at the bottom and these blue dots that's the dynamic support resistance and you see it pushed down once twice three times and maybe a fourth time so after you see at least two possible three or more is better pushes um and then you see a one ball two ball or three ball from the three level zz indicator you let this candle close these pink dots here or magenta that's the previous candle's midpoint. So if this candle closes above its midpoint, so if it closes above the magenta dot, that's where I go long. Now, Walmart does his slightly different. You want to tell him how you do yours? Sure. What I do is I wait for that candle to close completely. And then what I do is I wait for the next candle to go and break the high if we're going long, as in the example that's on the screen right now, I wait for it to break the high of that previous candle. Um, I do it slightly differently, and what I wind up doing is I wind up giving up some pips, but I just find for me it's a more conservative method, and uh, I just tend to have less losers doing it that way. Um, and so I like to go and do it that way. The difference is I give up pips, and I need to know that I need to go and probably get out a little bit earlier in terms of pips number of pips that I've gained than TRO would. And so what the scalper, you know, it has these three boxes here. So ready, set, go. And so what will happen is um, you'll get a ready indication probably in about mm, what, 18 seconds here because that means you've got the first part set up. And then the set part would be it's... Um, closing or it opens above that mid dot and see this sucker's really moving because sometimes what I'll even do okay so you see ready set and so like right here and then there was a go <laughs> and you and so all of a sudden it'll put the entry and where your stop should be and so, just telling you you know where you, where you should get in and where and what you should be looking for you know, in terms of a, as a stop loss. So it just makes it easy to put the trade in very quickly. So generally speaking, what I'll do on a DSR trade, I just go and just hit the buy button, you know, uh, the, for the instant buy. I just go and hit that, and then I'll come back, and then uh, go back in and call the trade back up on my screen and put my stop loss in and, and everything else because this has to happen. It's happening dynamically and very, very quickly. It's not like the Walmart where you can actually plan your trades a little bit more. This is more of in-the-moment trading. Scalping. Yeah, well, plus the other thing is, if you noticed here, it did actually flat turn this green. And so right there on the trade, you would have gotten in. Now, this might be one of those ones where um, it could be a loser. Um, part of the reason is, is because it shot through, on this candle shot through the previous candle's midpoint. And it also actually broke the high. So sometimes 
if you so you're on the bottom you see a one ball two ball three ball here and then it's going your way at the midpoint you can also jump in early but that's not a true dsr trade um per se yeah and and you know the other thing too is uh what we need to really talk about is that if you notice this kind of goes against my cardinal rule and you most of the time you do wind up going trading against the hourly candle so you know that's it's not it is you're it's really a reversal so yeah you probably a lot of times you're going to go and trade against the hourly candle where this really works out well is if you get those you know those really fortunate times when you know you're able to get into this trade and when it goes and breaks the breaks the uh, the high of that wick and it actually winds up giving you in addition to that a, a you know a uh, in this case a a green hourly candle that is just a wonderful wonderful setup um here we go we got we're up uh, a little bit here yeah um, so you know we're, we're doing this live but if yeah, you come I'm back actually, yeah yeah i did jump into that trade just so you know okay um so uh, i'm up right now i'm up like two and a half pips so you know but the thing is that i'm already thinking about getting out because this is a pure scalp method for me right and if you look back here at the three ball you can see we had an, a, a a setup we had the three ball this candle opened below so i would have been in at the open the walmart would have would have uh been in right here at the low of this candle and you see we took a little heat but then it came down and in fact we're both kind of kicking ourselves because I took a holo short, <laughs> which is a, a, another method, the high, the H1 highest open, and I was short there. Then he jumped in at the Walmart line at 20, and he's and I said this sucker's going back down to almost to the double low. And he says if it broke the 15, it was gonna go. And we both punched out <laughs> before it broke the 15. <laughs> I literally punched out right at 15.2 or something like that. Yeah. Like, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what happens in trading sometimes, you know. Um, okay. You can't, you can't, you, can't, you know, you, you can always put up that that screen of regret. You can't regret, man. No, no regret. Go forward. No. Are you still in the trade <laughs> you know, here? Uh, no, I got out. I, I went and, uh, you know, based on what it did was, and I didn't like the way it was starting to retract on me. So I actually got out with 2.9 pips. So, yeah. And, that, was, and, that was sort of quick that happened, though. Yeah. Now, one of the things I also um, do when I'm doing this, I usually use the M5 for the entry, but a lot of times I will shift back to M1 for the exit. And if I see a one ball or two ball or three ball appear, Sometimes I'll let that candle close, but more times than not, I will punch out because I've had it, you know, show like 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 in this case, it'll show a two, it showed the two ball and it'll drop. And sometimes you might only be up a couple of pips, and then all of a sudden it drops, and then it keeps dropping, and then you're out at break even, or you wind up, you know, either stuck in the trade or, or you know you wind up taking a loss. When you could have had, you know, a couple of pips in the bag. So, so right now it's starting to move back up. But, you know, once again, we don't know. And as you can see here, even though I'm on the M1 chart, this is still showing the M5. And I think Walmart, don't you have a cup? Don't you have two instances of this loaded on your chart? I do. I have the M1 and the M5 up on the screen. Uh, generally, I don't trade off of the M1. Um, but I, I do from time to time, so for that reason, I just leave them both up there. I just put two instances, that way I can see them both. And sometimes I do that just because I'm sitting there and I see a range that's occurring. This is a very, very, very uh, nice little, uh, you know, method to use. If you see that you've got a range where it's ranging across, you know, a 20 or 30 pip range where it's going up 20 or 30 pips and then come back down 20 or 30 pips and then up 20 or 30 pips. Well, sometimes the nice thing about the, if it's doing that, I like the M1 because a lot of times it'll get you in you know, earlier than the M5 will. You won't have to wait the entire five minutes. You won't have to give up all that movement. So I like having it up there for that reason. If I see that pattern starting to develop, 
Um, uh, the M5, you know, is more of a, it, it, I think is a more solid in terms of profit, you know, in terms of making sure that you get winning trades. But the problem with the M5 is that you give pips up, which also means that when you get in, sometimes, you know, the, the thing that's interesting when you trade the M5 on this is that sometimes it, it clues you in a big move, but a lot of times, though, it just moves up maybe two or three pips and you need to get out. And I, that's why I think TR, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the reasons why you jump down to the M1 so you can see it, you know, right away. Okay, this thing's starting to turn against me. I had a one ball show up, let's say if I went long, uh, I, sh I have a one ball shows up on the top. Okay, I need to get out or start thinking about getting out pretty quick here. You know, and so for that reason, you know, that that's that, that really answers two questions. One, why do I have two instances? And then also, how do we get out so we know that we, we stay profitable? Yeah. Now, the other thing on this, um, traders, is is the mid dots. And this is something that I, I tease Walter about all the time. And it's like I say, you trust the dots. So long as price is opening above this mid dot, you can stay in the trade. But the critical thing is it's those first couple of pips. And that's where you have to make the decision ahead of time. You're either going to trust the dots or you're just going to, you know, try and trade in the moment. But, you know, if you've still been in this trade, you can see it's moving up. Yes, that's hindsight. But if you look here, if you just trust those dots, usually the dots will tell you when to get out. And that's the mid dot. So let me just show you the indicators here. You've got the 2020 D DYN scalper. Then the dynamic SR puts the uh, blue support and red resistance dots there for the support. Then the TRO mid dots will put the magenta dots. And of course, you can change these colors um, if you don't like them. And then the, the B clock indicator, magnified market price here. The three levels, easy semaphore, which puts the one ball, two balls, and three balls. And then the TRO time here. And then the buttons down there. So those are all the indicators. And, and on this chart, um, once again, this is this is the only one that's the uh, this one right here. That's the only one that's donational. And so you don't need this to trade the method because um, this is once again, this is just a helper where, you know, when you see these light up, either red or green to, sh to indicate long or short, um, it just helps you with the, with your entries. And, uh, and jump in and yeah what I, I think where that you know when we developed this together you know you did all the coding obviously um, but you know when I was trying to explain what I wanted with this with you I think what one of the things that you know what happened was I was relying on that a lot and what it did was it, it taught me to go and be very very mechanical in the way that I do it because you have to go this type of method you have to be extremely mechanical and now to be honest with you I've got it up on a screen and I hardly look at it because I can just immediately just see it on the chart. It just, you know, it just screams out, but it's nice having that, that indicator there because what it does for you is in the beginning while you're learning the method, it's, you know, it's making it very, very, you know, it's pointing out, Hey, you've got a setup here. You need to go, you know, and you just jump in and go and do it. Uh, so, you know, that would be my advice with that, you know, um, I'm trying to see. I don't recall if you have a uh, if you have an audio alert. I think you do have an audio alert on this as well, which would be uh, fantastic. I'm just looking right now at the uh, at the. No, you don't. I thought you did. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Maybe yeah. he's created you more work. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then you can see here. Um, right now, we've got a, a setup to go short. Okay. And notice I said, you know, before I said, that, you know, if you got, it works really well if you start getting into a range. Here we've got a 26 pip range from that one ball at the top to the one ball on the bottom. You know, if we get a setup here, we could be going into a period during this day where it's just going to go and rotate, you know, between those, those, uh, those uh, dynamic support and resistance lines there. And so, you know, it, it's just 
a nice way to go and figure out where your entry is. Now, of course, you know, and you say this all the time, and you know, those, those dots there or those balls there, what they really are is indicating a breakout. Right, so, and, and I was just going to say, we're almost done. But one thing, fellow traders, on this is that I usually only like to reverse off of um, the three balls and the two balls, and I usually don't reverse off of one balls. But, you know, that's something that, that you'll see in trading it because it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So, train the banks. <laughs>